my goodness. Well, 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 everybody, we are doing this again. Welcome to yet another Data Jam. I don't know why they keep bringing me back, so I am so grateful to be speaking with all of you today. And let me just tell you, Kent Blacks, your VP of BizDev over here at Segment, and we assembled another amazing uh, panel for discussions today. So we are so excited to be chatting. Let's get started. Let's jump in. I'm going to introduce our panelists today, starting with none other than Ben Udell, who's been at the financial services industry for nearly 25 years, all um, in and around fintechs in, in general, particularly understanding what's important to members. He is currently the SVP of consumer banking at our customers, rather consumer banking at Monona Bank. He oversees all the retail branches, consumer products and services, consumer lending, and much, much more. And he's been a valuable asset to us. Um, really enjoy speaking with him. Ben, thanks so much for taking the time to join our data jam today. Uh, you're welcome. I'm uh, thrilled to be here. Look, uh, looking forward to it. Oh, you say that now, but just wait till we get to the lightning round and all the bonus questions. Also joining us is Cheryl Dutton. She's the SVP and CMO of Ultra Federal Credit Union. She's also the champion for all of Ultra's financial advisors. And she's been with the credit union for about 10 years and leads an award-winning team. Many of you may have seen her in the, in the press previously. We're so excited to have her. And, and her mind is one of the, as a brand, strategi a brand strategist, struggling today, is, is unprecedented. Cheryl, thank you so much for joining us on the Data Jam today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I am looking forward to it, too. Again, I'm going to tell you the same warning I gave, I gave Ben. You say that now. You say that now. And also joining us from some undisclosed underground location is our very uh, vice president of client success at Segment. And that would be Z Gaba. Z, who I've worked with in the trenches for a long time now, is um, really in charge of onboarding new clients, channel activations, and ongoing client management. He brings over 15 years of client-facing experience in digital media, marketing, and IT. And we are, we, even though I give him a hard time, we are blessed to have him. Z, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Kent. You're very kind. It's, it's my team that makes me look good. So appreciate it. Happy to be here. <laughs> well, let's jump in. Uh, guys, again, thank you for joining. But really, our focus today with this Data Jam is really all things accessing relevant insights. How are you for your customers and members and account holders in general? Really understanding them better. What are your credit unions and banks, your organization specifically? doing in and around those areas. And we're also going to touch on some other things that might be important in the industry right now. How are you, and this is crucial, keeping data secure? We'll probably pick your pick your brain a little bit there too, Z, for best practices. But ultimately, the uh, the what we want to get out of this session is for our audience to understand what use cases your, your banks and credit unions are doing. And then how can we really see the data landscape and use it to be adaptable and efficient Maybe outside of marketing, maybe outside of engagement for account holders, but really the sky is the limit there. But let's get started here. I'm going to open it up. Actually, I think I'll point virtually at you, Cheryl, first. As you've kind of been been using data more efficiently lately, you're leveraging our technology as well. Where do you think FIs find the most valuable data about account holders? What's been the kind of special area um, from your data that's been most prevalent? Well, I think transactional data is the most valuable data that FIs can get their hands on and understand that data. Uh, we use it to really um, look at the competitive landscape, you know, where are members, loans elsewhere, deposits elsewhere, wealth management accounts elsewhere, to develop strategies around that. How can we make sure we have the most share of wallet based on that information? We also look at how you know healthy, how financially well our members are. We'll be, we, you know, we know where their deposits are, their savings are, their loans are, and if they're in financial stress, you know, how can we help them? So transactional data has just, um, I don't know, been a lifesaver for us. That makes that makes perfect sense. Ben, I'm going to point at you virtually now. Uh, same question to you at Monona. Yeah, so obviously a great question, and it, it kind of pairs off of what Cheryl's saying. I think how we've really used Segment is we've looked at, um, you know, we have a fixed resource budget, right? And so we've used Segment to really drill into what's our actual volume, what's our opportunity, what's our capability to actually reach out to these clients. You know, that's that's really clouded if you're not using a service like Segment. And so now we can actually do the math and we can understand um what that opportunity is available to us. So instead of chasing opportunities in the dark, not only do we understand what they are, but as we drill down into the data, we can be more laser focused on using the data to make good decisions and to 
really focus in on on client opportunities that we have. That's by far and away been a huge gain for us with with Segmenter. Now, Cheryl and Ben, you both bring up interesting points um, around transactional data and being kind of the well, it seems like that's where you're you're focusing your efforts. Z, I want to want to ask you. Um, as you're, you know, front and center for so many of our organizations, our, our clients, and, and kind of on your background, are there any other areas of data that we're seeing being very valuable right now, or are we focusing primarily on transactional as it pertains to, to the FIs? Yeah, that's a great question, because, you know, when you think about transactional data, your mind always goes to, you know, how can you better understand your account holders? Because, that the best indicator of who people are is reflected in the transactions that they make. So if if I if I'm a golfer, I'm going to have golf related transactions, uh, you know, in my account. So you can start to tell a story based on really analyzing that data set. But you know, we don't even have to get that complicated. You know, a lot of our clients simply gain a lot of uh, good understanding from just looking at, you know, behavior indicators, you know, how are account holders interacting with products and services with the institution? What's their utilization? What's their product mix? Uh, that has a huge impact on, on how they, they strategize and what tactics that they use. And then when you layer on the competitive KLIs that we're, we're able to produce to see, you know, hey, someone is paying their Chase credit card from, from this account. So how about we we market to them our credit card? It just starts to layer uh, uh, onto the different services and tactics that they can use to better serve their, their account holders. So really it's starting off from the very basic and access to information to then layering on additional insights that, that can be produced from transactional data. Yeah. You know, I, I, what I'd add to that is I think Segment has this giant leap that that affords us. So when you think about a, we're a, we're a $1.3 billion bank, nine branches. The feedback loop to understand that transactional data is either core or it's pulling some data out and it's getting feedback from the branches. But in this ever increasing digital world, we just do not see our clients or have that, that strong enough feedback loop to understand that. So this is one of those ways where we can start to validate what we're hearing in the branches or do the math. We often hear some of our clients will say, or some of our associates will say, well, this is happening a lot. And you ask, what's a lot? And they can't really articulate that. So then I can go into segment and I can actually see, all right, is this a lot for us? How do we utilize this? Is the landscape shifting? Or um, is it they just had a couple of random client conversations and they were important conversations, but they weren't enough to get me to jump out of my seat to do something different strategically within the bank. Very valid. I want to circle back to Z real quick because you mentioned a term that our audience, if they're not familiar with uh, our approach to data, was, was KLI. Do you want to give quick a uh, just sure. a quick synopsis for maybe anybody who isn't familiar with the segment Absolutely. landscape, what, what yeah. that means? Yeah, absolutely. So KLI stands for key lifestyle indicators. And at the very most basic level, it's metadata, it's data tags. So we analyze uh, transactional data from the core for every account holder that an institution has. Uh, and we do that without the need uh, to take in PII. And we are able to assign different key lifestyle indicators from the very basic of which accounts and what products and services they, they hold to how they interact with those products and services to looking at the, the spend that they're doing on their accounts uh, so that we can start to tell a story about, you know, if they're a golfer or a home improver to also seeing where they're making payments uh, and, and being able to produce and, and bubble up uh, competitive key lifestyle indicators. Where are they paying their mortgage if they don't have it with the institution? It affords a, a, a whole new world of information that is, essentially sitting there for financial institution to just tap into, right? Appreciate it. Great for those of you, really, it, it is, it, they're, they're data tags and, and that's what you nailed it. It's so important, right, to have that kind of repeatable process to be able to, well, 
as you kind of described it, have categorized data that, that the institution can leverage, which leads to where I want to take the discussion next. And I'm going to point at, at, at Cheryl here to take lead on, mm -hmm. on the first crack at this. We here in the industry, and I in my every day when I'm talking to, to credit unions and banks and really anybody in the fintech space, the the mythical beast, if you will, the unicorn is that one central source of, of truth, right? How are how are we getting that one true source of data or the 360 degree view or the holistic whatever buzzword you want to view around your account holders? Um, what advice do you have for FIs maybe looking to establish that? And then also the follow up to that for everybody in this call will be, how do you make it easy for everyone at your organization? If you have that kind of approach, how do you make it easy for everybody to, to get to that? Right. Um, so a lot I've just thrown at you, Cheryl. Sorry, but um, that's okay. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> so we started our journey to build our data warehouse about four years ago. And let me tell you, it is not a sprint. It is a marathon. Um, it is a big project. Um, it's not just IT. It's every single business unit needs to dive in and validate data and make sure the data is correct. So um, it's it's really a big project and advice is, you know, you may have to partner with someone. We did. We partnered with someone to help us build it. And then also um, it's really key that everyone stays involved afterward and really managing the data warehouse. You know, are you going to do that in house? Are you going to hire a data scientist to help you with that? You know, these are all challenges of putting together this one true source of data and then making it really easy to use. So right now we have a lot of visualizations set up, you know, on our internal website that our employees use. And, you know, our team worked really, really hard to make them easy to use, um, drop downs that are easy to toggle through, sort through. So that's another big key is when you do finish it, how are you gonna use the data? How is it gonna look? Are you gonna make it easy for people, train people, on how to look for that data. Um, so it's, like I said, it's a marathon, not a sprint. That, that, that seems to be a, a common theme when, when I'm talking to, uh, to prospects and clients alike. Uh, that's a perfect way to describe it, a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, ben, your team at Monona, um, your thoughts in and around that, what's it been like as you kind of work towards that one true source of, of data? And I know you're smiling, yeah. I, I see the I'm smile at I'm, I'm chuckling because when we went through like the questions for prep, my response to this question is best of luck. And <laughs> when you, when you hear Cheryl talk about, you know, and you know, the, the little bit of the process, a little bit of the people, uh, the engagement before the engagement after that's a, that's an amazing question. And they are, sounds like they're doing a great job, but I also think culturally there's a lot of us out there with, you know, the bank space, the community bank space, the credit union space, we're just not going to, we're not in a place to do that. We're not in a place to, to invest with that. And so it's not right or wrong. I think what I would really contribute in this case is to take a step back for those banks that aren't going to look for that kind of that holy grail, if you will, that black box of all this data. And that's what's the bread and butter of banking. It's gathering deposits, it's making loans, it's expanding relationships, it's relationship utilization. So when I think about this question, it's very much in the sense of how do we take the data that we have and fulfill on those points? So the KLIs around home equity opportunities, credit card opportunities, underutilized lines, uh, clients that are savings opportunities, you know, that's where I see us utilizing this. And in some ways, I think of it very much as how do we right size the technology that we have? And for us right now, that's kind of what we're getting with, with the segment relationship is we can take all that. We can quickly, quickly understand it. We don't necessarily jump off to a lot of other data points. And then we apply it in this omni-channel marketing approach to all of our clients. And, I, you know, again, I, I think we'd love to be where it sounds like Cheryl's team is at, but we're not close to that. And, I think, you know, that's just fine for where we're at. But how do we use the data we have to be smarter uh, about what we're doing? That, that's where we're at today. And I think that's the honest conversation that banks and credit unions just simply have to have um, on this topic. You know, what, what can you actually bite off and chew, right? Yeah, well, and if I could, oh, if I could jump in there, Kent, you know, 
Ben, you, you made a great point. I think, you know, for institutions just like, you know, Ultra and Cheryl, where they, they have the resources and, and the the executive buy-in to be able to do a project of that nature to to institutions like like yours, Ben. I think the, the key thing is that, you know, when we talk about data warehousing and we talk about data and information, you know, that's great. But but what that what does that really mean? You know, you could have information, but you have to work to derive insights from that information, right? So what you want to always look for is can we partner with the right solution provider to really provide us those insights rather than simply aggregating that information. And I think that the key there is you want to get to those insights because you're going to be able to go to market faster. You're going to be able to service your account holders better. And, and that's what it's about within a data warehouse or without it's, it's about, you know, getting to the right information at the right time. Yeah. And I would say culturally for us, um, not that we don't want to have all of that data, but you talk to some other banks, you know, my world out there, and they like to gather all of this data. And then you ask them about where do they go with it? What do they do with it? And it's not actionable that actually is now filtering downstream into the branch environment, into the marketing environment, into the community environment. And they're willing to spend all this money on gathering data. But when it comes to a graphic designer that can do you know, the, the web art to actually apply it downstream, that, that's missing. And, and when you think about us being in a very much results environment, um, you know, that, that's huge. That's an important conversation. And granted, very cultural. It depends on each, you know, institution. But, um, you know, that's, that's what works for us. And, you know, we're going to keep hammering away at it. I, I love it. And, and all of you have hinted at um, different words of like actionable and insights and, and things like that. And I'll start with Cheryl, what I would really love, and I would love for our audience to get a feel for, because I, I, I tiptoed around it at the onset, but both of you, Cheryl and Ben specifically, you know, are very well regarded in your industry and have had that kind of a little bit of public eye. Your institutions have been very progressive as it comes to experience for your account holders. So I really want our audience to get a feel for Kind of, if you can share some of those aha moments you've had as you've started to dive into the insights and the data, and if you can share a little bit about what that's meant, you know, for operationally, but also for your account holders. So, again, very open question. I get that, but really, just looking for a, what are the insights that you've seen that kind of opened your mind, and what are the use cases that have been very well valuable for you, and you think that experience might be great to share with with our audience today. Cheryl, I'll start with you. Sure. So the biggest aha moment um, for us was <clears throat> during the pandemic. We saw a huge increase through the data of members getting unemployment payments. And it was really concerning for us because how can we help them? Do we help them defer a loan? Can we help them defer mortgage payments? You know, because they're going under a lot of financial stress. So we quickly, you know, pulled the list of those members that were getting these unemployment payments. We sent them over to our credit services department so they could be proactive and reach out and help these members before they, you know, we you know got too far down the path of not being, you know, financially well. And then also um, we offered our financial advising services, you know, free, no obligation. Do they need some help in financial planning? Can we help with a 401k rollover? Just what can we do to help those members that are, are really experiencing a lot of financial stress. So that was a big aha moment for us when we first started using um, Segment. Question for you on that follow-up. How was that, one of the questions I always see when I'm talking to prospects who are interested in leveraging their data is, is there ever, I, I can't think of the terms they use, but does that ever feel, I guess where I'm going is how, how did the members in your case, how, how was that received when you're reaching out to them knowing a little bit about what they're going through how what was that delicate balance like and how was the overall you know reception from from your account holders yeah it wasn't creepy so okay it was, that was the term <laughs> was it the term. wasn't creepy it was just you know really targeting a, a personalized message through online mobile and our website through segment just is there anything we can help you with um, we have financial advisors on on our staff to help you um for credit services it was just really reaching out saying you know um 
Ultra's here to help you. Um, we know the pandemic is um, causing a lot of financial stress. What can we do to help you as our member? And it was very positive because it was very proactive. Awesome. Awesome. Ben, looking at you with the same open open swath here where the, the floor is yours. Yeah. You know, maybe just a quick analogy I'd share or even story for those that maybe aren't part of segment right now. Uh, about a year ago, my wife and I were in Sedona, and it's a, a wonderful place for stargazing. And we all look at the stars, we've all seen the moon, and we did this stargazing tour, and we got to see the moon under uh, uh, this you know, gigantic microscope. And I think that's the same analogy with looking at data through segment, is it just becomes so unbelievably clear, and you know, if you geek out on it, it's extremely amazing, and and that was extremely eye-opening to us. Like, you know it's going to be really cool, but you don't really know until you actually see it. And so how we've actually started to apply that, maybe a couple quick ways. Uh, one is, you know, over the last year, the crypto space has been, you know, kind of blowing up. Oh, yeah. and everybody's talking about it. you got to be in the space. Well, you know, in pre-segment, if we wanted to actually understand, is there a client engagement opportunity? Should we... Uh, look more closely at vendors, we wouldn't have really any great way to be able to do that. And now I can go into Pinpoint and I can run a quick KLI to understand who's working with Coinbase, who's working with Robinhood, and this is what it means. And that helped clarify for us how we wanted to use our resources. I think that's kind of the theme that I have. Um, but to Cheryl's point, we have that same thing as well on uh, clients who are maybe getting more of, um, you know, what's called checks in the mail, if you will. And we couldn't really see them because they were digital. The, the offshoot of that of what we did is because we can now download the client information and kick that into an email, we can set a, really a program around how many email communications should we have to our clients? How much is too much? Cheryl mentioned before that, that comment on, is it creepy? Is it too much? Well, now we have the ability to not only segment our clients, but also program out um, what's the right number of touch points we want to have, what's a goal or what's too many. And not that we get client feedback on that, but I think that helps us just real strategically understand um, how do we want to communicate with our clients, how much is too much, how much is not enough. And when you start seeing that partner off with results, you know, now we can decide where we want to step on the gas a little bit more, where we want to we're kind of pull off the gas. And we can talk later about, I think, how we've done that a little bit on, for instance, the home equity space and the mortgage space. But um, I get, it helps us program how we want to reach out to our clients much more clearly and focus rather than, you know, these spam emails because we think they're going to be an opportunity for us. So uh, really powerful. I love the way you just described that, the way you uh, program it and kind of no longer doing things on the, hey, we think this may be um, the approach. I, I, I think I think you nailed it there. Z, curious to get your take on this kind of, that kind of back to that aha moment, but really uh, what are you hearing from clients? I mean, you're, you're, you're in the trenches, you and your team, your amazing team of client success managers are the ones kind of front and center with, with the clients as they start diving into data. What, uh, what are you hearing as they first begin to First, well, first of all, it, yes, it is an amazing team. I, yeah, I, I agree with you there. Um, uh, you know, it's it's funny the the analogy that you gave Ben because it's um, we've we've never gotten the the, the stars uh, and stargazing analogy, but we do have lots of car analogies. You know, we have clients saying, "Oh, I, I just feel like I got a Maserati," or some have said, uh, "Oh." I feel like I, I just, you know, bought a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. So there's been a lot of car references when they first see the data. <laughs> they're they're always surprised at how granular they can get uh, the the data to be. Uh, and and just like you you mentioned, uh, Ben, you know, uh, you know, thinking and actually programming it, it's it's allowed our clients to really start to think strategically about how they interact with their with their account holders rather than just rely on old biases or, you know, hey, we used to only do mortgage, mortgage campaigns in the in the spring and the fall. You know, we're not thinking about that anymore. We're really looking at the data to see when is it the right time for these account holders to have the conversation about a mortgage as an example. So it really opens their eyes to a whole new world. Yeah, and I, I'd add to that. We work closely with uh, Lori McMaster, who's been in, in an outstanding relationship uh, rep for us with Segment. And that immediate impact of, is the campaign working? Is it not working? 
we just changed from art? What's the click-throughs look like? What's the, the value being added through it? You know, we we just simply can't do that, A, with our resources, but also we, you know, we're pretty omni-channel with our marketing as it is. So to tie that all together and make quick changes, you know, to, to kind of let that Maserati, you know, really hug the curves for that analogy. I mean, that's that's huge for us. And that's, we just can't do that on our own. Most banks can't do that on their own. Well, I want to shift slightly along the same veins, but um, I guess I'll go to you first, Cheryl. Um, talk to me a little bit about, as we're going through this, we're, we're talking about data, we're talking about insights. You gave a great example about unemployment and things like that. Talk to me about, and it doesn't have to be specific to our tool, just data in general. How in this day and age with faster access to data, how are you and your teams adapting quickly? Um, because again, insights are one thing, but the ability to leverage that quickly and adjust to well changes to your to your member base um, in a, in a pretty swift manner. What's that like, and and what are you seeing? How's it changed the landscape for you? Oh sure, well you can identify trends pretty quickly. So buy now, pay later programs have just exploded, right? That's a great one. Yeah. And they're really worrisome for us because we don't know if our members really understand the consequences of these programs, the higher interest rates that they're paying, and now with the shortages, you know people are are buying now. They want it now. They're like, I might not get it later, and so they're taking advantage of multiple multiple programs. So. We're able now through segment to identify those um, members that are utilizing buy now, pay later programs and to send them a message, you know, need some help. We have low interest rate loans where you can consolidate your debt. You know, how can we help them, you know, be more, you know, again, financially well because they're using these programs and they're paying huge interest rates. So I think that's an example of really being adaptable, really being efficient, really trying to help our members understand these programs and give them an alternative solution. Yeah. I'd love to hear that. You bring up a really interesting use case one, you know, buy now, pay later. We've heard a lot about, and Ben, you brought up crypto, which my goodness, we've all heard a lot about. So same approach to you, Ben. Um, yeah. What is the, what's the landscape like for you? Adaptability, you know, I guess speed to market, you know, or I should say speed of insights to, to market. What do you, How's that changed for you operationally and what are you seeing? Yeah, I, you know, I'll give you one great example. We, we literally just dealt with this last week. Um, you know, we've been doing a lot of checking acquisition campaigns. And what we found with a lot of the direct mail that we were doing, we just were not getting the response rate that we wanted. And granted, segment is a little bit more focused into, you know, our client base. But we have a lot of clients who don't have a checking account you know, sure. with us at this point in time either. So if we think about how we design, let's call it a mail card, a newspaper uh, piece, you know, we are still holistic in how we're approaching clients, but between the design of that piece, the mailing time, the response time, um, the setup time for all of that, all of a sudden we've just wasted a month and understanding, you know, A to Z, what's the ability. So now we've taken the approach to the open internet side of the segment world and we've started to redo that. And granted, we're adding some other digital tools. But what I think is really nice about the speed is we can go through and create, you know, within a day, you know, all the art that we want to have. We can put it out to all of these channels through segment. We can complement the art through non-segment channels. And, you know, theoretically, it's that, that took us 48 hours to be able to go through and do that. And because we're seeing more immediacy and results, we also have a better understanding of what our actual acquisition costs are. And so if you roll that into the home equity space, the credit card space, you know, the big areas that we also play in, um, you know, we can make changes immediately. And um, that allows us, I think, to be you know better off with our resources. You know, we'll, we'll we'll skip a bunch of spending because it just isn't working, and you know roll it back in to find something that is. Um, and that's I, again, that's that's huge. That's you know the digital age, right? But you know, for a lot of banks in our space, that's this omni-channel approach that is is difficult to get to when you start piecing together a bunch of programs rather than having segment as one program that we can roll everything out of. I, I, I love, uh, again, the use cases both of you are providing are, are ridiculously cool. Um, and, and I love for our audience to hear that. Uh, ben, you highlighted uh, the open internet channel. I'll point to Z. I'm familiar, obviously, with that, what that is. 
but leveraging our insights into these channels. Z, do you want to take kind of a stab as to what sure. our clients, not just not just specifically open internet, but Ben started to highlight something there about what it looks like now to have kind of a more seamless marketing campaign with these insights in the quick turn. And then please, Cheryl, Ben, I'll, I'll look to you after this if you have anything you want to add to what marketing campaigns look like when everything's operating efficiently now. Right. So open internet uh, uh, feature that we have is we are hooked into a demand site platform where we can do programmatic ad buys out on the open internet. So, you know, a lot of our, uh, you know, your account holders, uh, they, they do go to your website, they log into online banking, they use mobile banking. But that is really, if you look at in a month, how many times they're going in, it's, it's a very small fraction of time versus how much time they're spending out on the open internet. So what we've been able to do is through our, our DSP partner and through the programmatic ad buy, we are able to purchase media on your behalf out on the open internet to really reach out on a one-to-one -one basis to your account holder so that you can have that relevant conversation, not only on your own channels, but out on the open internet as well. So that's a that's a quick uh, overview of that. But I, I want to I want to piggyback on what what Ben said. I think it's so important to have uh, the the availability of data so that you can have earlier validation of your tactics and and your programs. Right? It's so important to be able to be agile uh, so that you can really adjust and respond to the market as as you see the data flowing in and as the the sentiment is shifting or as the behavior is shifting you're able to react to it. And, and having that access really gives you a leg up on your competition, right? Because you're able to react to it way faster than, than anyone else can. And, and with that, I mean, that access to data can have so many different use cases. Like one recent one that comes to mind is one of our clients, we, we were talking to them about how to really engage their, their account holders in terms of debit card swipes. And one of the ideas that we came up with was really looking at the charitable giving within their account hold base. So we were able to see uh, where people are, are giving money to and, and what's important to them. And coupling that with the debit card swipes, we came up with a program that, hey, if you swipe X amount of times, we will donate X amount to your charity, right? So that it not only is good engagement with the account holders. It makes them feel better. Hey, I'm doing some good. It's good for the for the institution where you're also helping to to donate to to uh, uh, wonderful causes. But it's also beneficial for the financial institutions who can then see an uptake in debit card swipe. So data can be used in so many different ways to interact with with, uh, with your account holders. It's I, I get really passionate about it. So yeah. I apologize if I'm being really a good word. <laughs> No, that's why we're here. And, oh, go ahead, Cheryl. I was going to say, you know, to your point, I, I think it's easy to say, do we want our clients to use our credit cards? Yes. Do we want more cards and wallets? Yes. But your point starts to really articulate where we're kind of philosophically, culturally, strategically, how do you want to apply So for us, we're not that jazzed about our clients maintaining balances. We really want to promote debit and credit cards for you know the everyday purchases how people when they're using spotify and apple and verizon etc that's where we want to capture the interchange we don't want to have high balances and that's where you start i think take your, your strategy within your bank gather your klis and then be very focused with how you're whether communicating through you know open internet through the mobile channel through email heck you can do direct mail at that time too if you want to Kind of cover all the bases, and, and that's where you, you don't really think about it, but then once you start getting and seeing all that data, you can really uh, be laser focused on what your strategy is. I love it. I love it. You guys have um, really brought up a, a massive amount of great use cases, uh, and, and you've talked a lot about having well, the adaptability of data you know, close at hand, which it makes it so much easier, it sounds like. I want to go back and I'll, I'll leave with Cheryl on this, but piggybacking on something you said a little while ago, Ben, um, but something I think that's near and dear to many of our FI's hearts right now is, and there's so many different challenges in the marketplace right now, but I really want to talk about the, the, the housing market and 
what mortgages, you know, a little bit on the equity side, of course, too. But what's that like right now? And how are you leveraging data to, to speak, well, more relevantly to, to account holders in, in home lending and, and, and equity and scenarios like that? Because I can only speak for myself. I've been in this industry for over 15 years now. Um, it's crazy out there. Um, how, how are you guys using those insights to, to have those discussions? Yeah, sure. So it is very challenging, right, with interest rates increasing and, you know, low housing available. Um, so a couple of things we're doing is we have a very, very strong first time home buyers program. And through, through segment, we're able to identify those members who have a propensity that they're looking for a home. So we can target them with the first time home buyers program that we have. So we are doing that. We also looked at um, specific competitive mortgages. You know, where could we possibly have our mortgage team call these members and, you know, maybe do a better refinance? Right now, it's not a good time, but, you know, before interest rates really dope up, um, we were able to take a look at specific competitors and give those members to our mortgage team that they could call and maybe offer a refinance. So things like that. Um, also, we're just always targeting. We're always on anybody that's looking for a mortgage or, you know, looking at our website, you know, they're receiving those always on mortgage messages and how we can help them. And then, you know, home equity wise, you know, that's an area where utilization to us is important. We want to be top of mind. We want to make sure if they have a home equity with us, that they're using that home equity instead of something else, instead of, you know, a higher, higher loan, high, higher credit card. And so with Segment, we're able to identify those members that aren't utilizing their home equity lines and um, we're able to set a goal. So if they're utilizing, you know, 50 percent or less of their home equity line, we're able to send them a very personalized message. You know, bright idea. You know, you have this available. You have home. We have home projects that you need, you know, something, you know, help with, right, along with. Use your home equity line. But so things like that, you know, we've never been able to do that before. You know, utilization used to take forever to get numbers from our consumer lending department and then to download a list and then to put it in an email campaign and then to measure results. Well, right now we can put that came up campaign out there. We can measure those results right away. And it's really worked for us. It's actually one of our better performing campaigns. Fantastic. I uh, love that. It's, it's awesome to hear the way your team at Ultra is uh, utilizing that and uh, adjusting the fly. Ben, same question to you. The yeah, team. I, you know, first I'd say Cheryl's on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you, when you think about, you know, the environment today, that's a, that's a really good summary. I, I think what I would say to maybe reinforce a couple of things is, you know, for most of us, I've been at my bank for over 11 years and you feel like our clients know we do mortgages and they know we're competitive and they know we do home equity. And, and I think we lose sight of the fact they just don't, they don't appreciate it. We're not first in line for them. So, you know, that what the KLI opportunity does for us is, is we identify clients who are banking elsewhere for their home lending needs those are the people that we are definitely more aggressive with. And in fact, my, my director, James, even, you know, put up our home for home mortgages. Like we, we are all over the place digitally. So when clients are interacting with us as a bank, they can't lose sight of the fact that we use mortgages or we have mortgages, home equity. You know, the other thing that we've seen as well, back to kind of this quick pivot is with rates going up, we have made a strategic decision to not increase our home equity special. And the reason for that is in this environment, it's so tight, we are just hammering away at gathering as many home equity opportunities as possible before rates go higher. And, you know, that's something when you think about how do we take that ad, we verify the rate, we maybe change the art around, you know, we can do that in 48 hours if we want to. That is significantly faster than creating, printing, mailing, and getting a direct mail card out. And, you know, what are the odds for a lot of our banks that by the time we start that process, the Fed will now have increased rates yet again, which means maybe home equity and mortgage rates will go up yet again. And, and, and now we're running to catch up to the cycle rather than with segment where we are really running lockstep with the cycle. And that's, a, that's clearly a competitive advantage relative to the other players in town for us. Fantastic. And, and Kent, I'll, I'll add to this. You know, it's, 
Mark Lair, our, our head of data and analytics on an on a earlier data jam said it best, you know, account holders don't really are looking for a, a home equity line of credit. They're looking for a new basement, right? So it's a matter of how you message to them and how you talk to them. But, you know, identifying those account holders is the key, right? So you, you need, need the right uh, uh, insights at your fingertips to be able to do that. So, and one of the things that we've been doing is really because we we are able to have standardized categorized data it lends itself well to uh, uh ai modeling so we've been able to get into ai modeling and be able to assign uh those those klis through machine learning you know we have as a as a human being you know we only have certain brain capacities so utilizing the machines where they can correlate hundreds and thousands of different KLIs that, that we produce and be able to produce a predictive model and, and assign that KLI to those account mm -hmm. holders that may be at a higher propensity to open up that mortgage, it changes the game for, for, account hold, uh, for, for our financial institutions. And, and you know then they have to do that last mile and really message it right so that they can get those conversions flowing. Fantastic, I appreciate that. That's that's a whole another discussion is the the use of AI and, and Cheryl highlighted a little bit about, um, you know, understanding, you know, members who have visited and, 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 you know, starting, you know, their, their channels and looking for information and tying that into what you just mentioned, Z, taking that even a step further into true AI modeling and around behaviors and predicting what's next is uh, really, really the, the next frontier and amazing. We're seeing a lot of that obviously in market. Um, I do have to shout out James. I think you said it was Ben. The fact that you have a a director. I do. And, uh, you James know, we have brother is still here for me. He's even got a pointing <laughs> stick. So if I get a little too off to the side, <laughs> he can gently gently push me back. So that's clearly you've yeah. made it. You are the uh, the upper <laughs> echelon, which which James we know. James is a little embarrassed right now, so we won't put him back on camera. But he's doing a great job. He's doing a great job. Whatever. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. Um, I do want to ask uh, and, and shift to something kind of, kind of, I guess, more serious. Um, and I'll look to you, Z. One of the things is we kind of realized my my Supreme Chancellor, she's not a producer or director, it's Emily Fagan, but uh, what we call our Supreme Chancellor, because that's the title she deserves, has been hitting me on the time prompts here. But one thing I do think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Z uh, looking at you is, the sensitivity around all of this data that's probably paramount for anybody who may be watching this that hasn't started to really dive into it what's that like how do you keep it secure um we're talking about you know cheryl's talking about transactional data and you're really getting into insights in and around account holders what's the book of plays there yeah i mean the, the good part is that you know when when we deal with our clients we're dealing with financial institutions and they are are very very conservative and they they they're all about uh, data security and data governance, uh, but it really depends on the use case when when you're when you're uh, thinking about how to best uh, utilize those insights and that information in that environment and also keep it secure. Right? Uh, obviously, we've seen in the industry shifts to more tokenized or, or obfuscated or anonymized data, right? Where you're using a key rather than actual PII data. Uh, you know, luckily, you know, for, for years, we've been doing the same thing by, by, by tokenizing it. So we've been doing it uh, well ahead of, of the industry shifts, but it really depends on the use case because there are certain use cases like, for example, email where you do need an email address, right? To be able to execute on that. So how can you layer that in into your process so that you have the right data security while you're processing and analyzing the data, but right at the point when you need to execute where you can dereference it and then execute it as an example for email, right? So we, uh, we recently launched our, our constant contact uh, uh, channel and that's exactly what we're doing where we keep the data in a tokenized format and before we send it to constant contact to build the list over there it automatically gets dereferenced and then put it to constant contact so that we we never have the need to take in pii so it institutions need to look at use cases and keep that in mind because you know it, it 
Absolutely. The one one main thing is, you know, a lot of times we we look at, uh, hey, this solution is going to work for all use cases, and it's never it's never true. So you want to really look at it case by case. Excellent. Now I see from a time standpoint, we need to be winding uh, down a little bit here. I'll, I'll open it up for final thoughts to everybody in just a moment. But I see actually from the aforementioned Supreme Chancellor, Emily, we already have, a, a, it looks like two questions came in. They seem to be, as I'm reading this on the fly, actually around a, around similar touch points. I'll point back to you, Z. They're both questions around ultimately um, what type of resources typically needed. Actually, and Ben, sure, I'll point to you as well. Let me start. What kind of resources are you typically seeing um, deployed to to manage this type of data and tie it into action ability? Z, I'll let you start from specifically your team side. Then Ben, sure, would love your feedback as to you know, how operationally the, the data and marketing efforts kind of combine from, from resources at your team. So, so one of the things that we always uh, tell our clients is we're, uh, we're there for you, whether you like it or not. Right. So we're, <laughs> we're going to be, we're going to be uh, making sure at the very least we're meeting with you on a monthly basis. You know, we're, we're one of those rare vendors that don't really, you know, Hey, you're, you're onboarded, you're, you're implemented, see you later, you know, call us if you need anything. We don't do that. We, we believe in our client success, client success team and our clients' success. So we want to make sure that we're having regular touch points and we assign a, a dedicated client success manager to each of our clients so that we can talk to them about what's going on. What, Issues are you facing? Um, you know, what is a problem that has been on your whiteboard for months that you haven't been able to cross off? What is your, your board of directors asking you over and over again that is that's difficult to solve? Because you never know how data can can help solve for that. So we want to we want to make it like a therapy session, right? You tell us your problems, and and we will we will work with you to to try and figure it out. And as any partner would do if we can't we will be transparent with you and we will tell you that right we want to make sure that you're you're being successful with with any of your your use cases and any of your your problems that you're trying to solve a therapy session awesome yeah. cheryl how about you from a resource standpoint what's it like uh, again not necessarily mm -hmm. specific to to segment but leveraging data as a whole as it pertains to member engagement and more relevant dialogue with uh, the account holders Sure. Well, um, just specifically with Segment, we have a creative services manager that's part of the Segment team, if you will. And then we also have a marketing analyst and myself. So three of us are heavily involved in the data analysis, the KLIs, the campaigns, the results. Our marketing analyst kind of takes the lead when it comes to working um, on those results for us and letting us know, do we need a shift in creative? Do we need to change strategy with this? Do we need a different message? Are we going to test? Um, and then, of course, I, I have to compliment um, Lori McMaster, Ben. She's our, our client success manager. Also. Oh, boy. I'm going to hear all Lori loves She's amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. I mean, she constantly challenges us. I think that's the key. It's always about, you know, did you think of this? Did you think of this audience? Or we have this new KLI that you guys should be targeting. And here's how I would do it. And here's what other clients are doing. So, you're right. It's not just plug in and then segment is gone. Segment just continually adds value every month when we meet with them. Yeah. Hey, Cheryl, you know she's in Italy right now, right? No, really? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Maybe the watching. segment team could relay that Cheryl and I both gave her a little love. I, you no. know, I just wonder what she's going to send back to us from Italy. Maybe. Yeah. No, that, mess that message will not get to her, Ben. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> nice bottle of wine. Oh, might be nice. Yeah. 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 Um, I, real brief, because I know we're a little tight on time. I, I, um, I would echo what Cheryl's saying when it comes to how we operate internally within our bank. You know, James, besides being a director, also is our main contact here, the quarterback, if you will, for everything we're doing. Um, and then it touches a lot of other people. But the reality is that you get out of it what you put into it, right? So it's not a heavy ongoing level of maintenance. It's a heavy level of ongoing usage if you make it that. And for those that maybe aren't working with Segment, we, we use our uh, program with them through FIS. So one of the, I think the benefits of that path for us is that the installation, the implementation, 
the ongoing maintenance is pretty much non-existent for us. And that's very different when you get a lot of these other fintechs and providers in who are going to partner with you and your core. And it's a pain in the butt to set that connection up to make it roll, not knowing what the costs are. And so, you know, frankly, at the end of the day, what it means for us is we get to focus on how do we use the system to impact our clients and our bank's growth. And and that's frankly kind of rare for anybody that's working with a lot of fintechs these days. And Ben, I don't know if you can see it. We actually have a question specifically for you at Monona. Cassandra has reached out via LinkedIn saying, does Monona have a marketing management system that helps with any of that consumption, i.e. marketing cloud? Not, probably not, uh, maybe as holistically as she is suggesting or maybe asking. So we do use obviously an email system. Um, um, we've got a CRM that we use. Obviously, we use Pinpoint, but I think we're really at kind of the size and the scope where uh, we kind of manage it internally within ourselves. And to my earlier question or commentary about kind of your culture, how are you going to use it? That's that's definitely what works well for us. We're, we're getting bigger here. We're actually merging with another bank. So I think that could uh, definitely change it. It was Cassandra, but we haven't, haven't got to that point yet. Awesome. But, Congrats. And um, that's great. If... Um, uh, my Supreme Chancellor, Emily, if there's any other questions, give me a heads up. But we're broadcasting on a couple of different social media functions. So kudos to her for keeping it all together. Um, as we're kind of wrapping up here, I'll I'll start with Z and then Ben and then Cheryl. I'll kind of open it up to any final thoughts or recommendations. And, and if any other questions are in the audience come in, we'll certainly field those. But um, any final thoughts as it pertains to how to get started? What's the best approach or, um, you know, just your general thoughts on on data and, and the importance of engagement around account holders. Absolutely. For, I, I want to, uh, you know, start off this ending by, by, by thanking Ben and, and Cheryl, you know, you guys are valued partners and we, we absolutely appreciate you uh, being part of, of our uh, segment family, but data tells a story, right? For any FI that is looking to get started, talk to the right provider, talk to us. We'll, we'll be happy to have a chat with you. Kent would be, would be the first one to call you. But data tells a story. And the best way to really understand your account holders, it's through transactional data. That's where the, the magic is. And it's all there for you within your core. Ben, to you. Yeah, I, you know, I, I feel like anybody that's jumping into this world, they just haven't been part of this world elsewhere. And so for us, we started off slow. We did home equity. We did mortgage and instead of doing, you know, every single product service we could think of to get that transactional data um, used, we were more narrowly focused and that allowed us to understand how it worked, see results, pivot from results. Um, it allowed us to make sure we had this omni-channel experience that we could carry through both online, mobile, and then we still, I'll reference the direct mail. We like to talk about all those digital pieces, yeah. but to be able to give somebody the, the direct mail and then when they log in and see it and then they get an email later in the day, that's this omni-channel experience we all look for. And and so, so start look slow, figure it out, and it's just going to blossom from there. Perfect. Cheryl? Bring us home. Yeah, well said, Ben. I agree with that. Um, we started slow. We even tried to analyze our own transactional data, which was really, really difficult. Oh my goodness! You need to partner with someone like Segment, um, who has who has that down pat. They know how to identify, you know, the transactional data. So again, I agree. Start slow. Um, we picked, a, you know, maybe like five campaigns to start with. Measured the results and it really expanded it. I love it that, you know, one thing for me is always about ROI. How do you measure your marketing? It's, you know, it's very difficult now with certainly with um, Google and all the analytics you can get through them. It's a lot easier, but boy, I can go in and just look at, you know, how are these campaigns performing? What's the ROI? How many members have we impacted with this campaign? So I'm pretty excited about that fact, just the whole measurement of campaigns and how successful they are. Love to hear it. Thank you so much. And and to reiterate what Z said, Ben and Cheryl, really appreciate your partnership and, and really appreciate your time and, and ultimately your insights today. And Z, you as well for, for our audience. I, I just appreciate the three of you joining us today. So that's going to bring an end to yet another uh, fun and informative data jam session on behalf of Ben and Z and Cheryl. I'm Kent Blackshire, VP of BizDev at Segment, signing off. Until next time. Thanks.
Good. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone.